I'm over here in the gazebo. Andrea's over there in the gazebo. We have room on the couch for guests. That can only mean one thing. We're on to another show. I'm Mike Wixon. Right there is uh, Andrea Roylance from Matthew's House Hospice uh, right here in Alliston, Ontario, Canada, Earth. Uh, I like to come here and do the podcast and get out of the studio because it's such a beautiful place, Andrea. I know. And you know what? That is the invitation that we are putting out there. Please come and see us and learn what a hospice is and what it isn't. Remember we talked about that on yeah. our first show? Yeah the, the, yeah, the misconceptions of what a hospice is. Yeah, I know what you're thinking. Death is not easy and it certainly it impacts everybody. But what a hospice does takes some of that impact off and adds a lot more meaning uh, uh, to the end of your life. You know, I often talk about a hospice as an onion. You know, we all know that and we peel back the layers. The more comfort you experience, the next layer comes off and we get right to the core of the situation. You know, the performance of life is really at the core and that's how we want to address things and that's why we created this podcast. If you arrived here trying to find out how to build a gazebo because we called it the gazebo, sorry, but stick around anyway because the discussion is quite incredible uh, and subscribe to the show. If you like, share it with a friend. We're here each week with some incredible guests. Who are you talking to today? Today we're talking to Kim and Aaron. Uh, Kim has been with us before. Uh, Kimberly O'Brien Sweeney, you'll remember her amazing story. And when Kim and I first met, she astounded me with her incredible positivity and messaging. Um, But one thing that she talked about that we laughed about was, you know, death and dying can be messy, of course. Mm -hmm. But when you get your shit together. Oh, Andrea. I'm sorry. It has to be said. It has to be said. And Kimberly says it best, you know, when you get your (laughs) shit together and leave it all in perfect uh, organization for your family. Wow, what a feeling that is. Right, Kim? (laughs) Okay, here we're back and we're talking shit. So, Kimberly, let's hear it. Let's hear it from you about getting your shit together. What does that mean to you? Well, what it means to me is when you you hear a lot of country songs, a lot of songs about, you know, dying and, you know, I hope you get to dance and, and all these things. But when I heard about having stage four cancer and that my days were numbered, all I could think about was I'm such a planner. And I would be remiss if I didn't plan my exit strategy. Mm. And I have three amazing children and a husband that I love with all my heart and I could not be that person who would leave them to pick up all my shit Mm -hmm. so I wanted to make sure that I had my shit together and meaning that you know I had a plan for my taxes I had a plan for um, my will for my power of attorney for making sure that all my I's were dotted and my T's were crossed making sure that I didn't leave any of this to my peeps who were going to struggle when it was that time. I wanted to make sure that they could grieve and not miss out on dotting an I or crossing a T. And are they on board with you? Well, they struggled at first because there are a lot of tough conversations that need to be had. And it brought lots of tears. It brought a lot, all the feels, the anger, the sadness, Um, all the emotions that you're just not prepared to deal with. And in doing that, they didn't want to talk about it. But then they started to see it helped me. For me, I had to have a plan so that they, I knew that they would be okay. Mm -hmm. So everything done. And my primary reason for doing this was also a bit selfish in that if I knew from a future's perspective they were taken care of, then I could then focus on living what life I have left with adventure Mm -hmm. and with zest and also fighting the fight that I need to fight and having the strength and time to be able to do that. Not worrying about all those I's and and T's, everything that needed crossed and dotted. I wanted to make sure that that was done 
so I could have adventures and make memories with my kids and my husband and get on with the living part and then get on with the fighting part. Well, part of your getting your shit together is a book that you've created, right? Absolutely. And what's it called? Gets better. <laughs> You're dead. Now what? Yeah. Yeah. They really didn't like the book. I actually got it in a, a small shop here in Alliston. Uh, I stumbled upon it and I saw this book and I thought, wow, people are going to hate the title, but actually going through it, and it, it is a roadmap for your dying. And you can do as much or as little of it as you like. But for me, it gave me it gave me peace of mind. And is that something you work through with Aaron, your end of life doula? So interestingly enough, yes, because I could only take it so far. And our chance meeting, if you've listened to the other podcasts, our chance meeting helped me to realize that I had taken it as far as I could and I now needed Aaron to go those next steps, to go those next miles, to make sure that everything that I wanted and all the talks that I needed to have and all my eyes were dotted the way they needed to happen. And I needed Aaron for that, you know, my, my end of life doula. And so Aaron, are you seeing progress happen with Kimberly and working through? Well, she's a bit of a rock star if you yeah. haven't already heard about how amazing she is. So um, she is phenomenal and very mindful and thoughtful in everything that she does. So, I mean, every time I see her, there is something else that she's doing and another T that is getting crossed and another I that is being dotted. And the most wonderful thing um, that I've learned about her is that when we discussed my end of life doula role, she was telling me how she was supporting a friend of hers that was also dying and she didn't realize it at the time but she was actually dueling her own friend mm. and that was a really really beautiful mirror of an experience that we shared together because she was having those conversations with a friend and subsequently seeing what's coming for her in her friend which must have been very very difficult so we've been able to have great conversations about that and she's just amazing well We've heard her story. We've heard her messaging. Yeah, she is one amazing lady. And Kim, can you honestly say you've got your shit together? I do. I do have my shit together. I've got a couple of little more tasks, to, a few more tasks to do. Um, I think the big thing now in working with Aaron is it's, you know, finding out that, you know, your days are limited you know, you, you look at life very differently. I find if I get too far ahead and I see the world without me in it, it's very stressful. It's very, it's very sad. Mm -hmm. And so I rely on Aaron to help me be more mindful about where I am today and dealing with those specific tasks that lie in front of me and not getting too far ahead. And I think if I can say anything to anyone that it is in my position and you know you need some help and Matthew's house is a wonderful place to come to to be able to get that help to help you get in touch with those emotions and be able to feel all those feels in a very safe um, environment but Aaron pulls me back and I am able to be more mindful with where I am and where I'm going and I can then manage my coping skills hmm. on how to deal with my past. You know, just as you're talking about that, I'm thinking of Thelma and Louise. You know, I really think you girls totally. have that <laughs> chemistry and you're taking one big beautiful ride right off that cliff. So thanks ladies for joining. Really appreciate you being here. Thank you for having us. Thank you.